By your ring, Joseph was given might in Egypt. By your ring, Daniel was exalted in Babylon. By your ring, the truth of power was made manifest. By your ring, our Heavenly Father showed compassion upon his prodigal son. Lord, do you yourself bless this putting on of rings with heavenly benediction and may your angel go before them all the days of their lives. For you are the one that blesses and sanctifies all things and the use of our Lord to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Makari Pandes Ifabumeni Tokirio Oixoshi 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 Isaac and Rebecca. 
Bless them, O Lord, as you blessed Jacob and the, all the prophets. Preserve them, O Lord, as you preserve Noah and the ark. Preserve them as you preserve the holy three children from the fire. Remember them, O Lord, as you remember your holy fort martyr sending down upon them the crowns from the heavens. And remember, Lord, their parents, for the prayers of parents confirm the foundation of houses. Remember, Lord, the wedding company that ye have come together to be present at this rejoicing. And remember, Lord, your servants, Steel and Ruby, and bless them. Let them behold their children's children as newly planted olive trees around about their table. And being accepted before you, let them shine as stars in the heavens in you, our Lord, to whom are your glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. To Kirill, the Roman, O Theosoagios, O Plasas, the host of Anthropos, and the Splevras of the Economy, the Zineca, and the Zephyrus of the Voithon, and the Afton, ότι ούτως αρέσει τη συμμεγαλειότητη ή μόνο με τον άνθρωπο επί της γης αυτός μόνο θα εξαπώσει την χείρα σου εξ Αγίου κατοικητηρή σου και άρμοζον των δούλων σου στάθρων και την δούλη σου ραΐδα ότι παρασού αρμόζεται ανδρή γυνή. Στην έξω αυτούς ανεμοφροσύνη στεφάνωσαν από τους σαρκαμία χάρη σε αυτές τις κακοκυρίες ευτεκνίες απόλαυσή. Ο τη όρων του κράτου Himself. 
earth. For no one ever hated his own body, but provides and cares for it, as the Lord does the church. For we are living parts of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. For this reason shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and church. Yet each one of you individually must love his wife as his very self. And the wife must see to it that she treats her husband with respect. Peace be upon you there we go. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us be upstanding, let us hear the Holy Gospel. <coughs> Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to John. Let us attend. At that time there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the marriage. When the wine ran out, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what have I to do with this? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars standing there for the rites of purification, holding 20 or 30 gallons each. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Then he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward of the feast. And they took it. When the chief steward tasted the water that had become wine, and did not know where it had come from. He called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drank freely, then he puts out the poor wine. But you have kept the good one until now. This was the beginning of the signs that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. And his disciples believed in him. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. Women fathers, exorcist psychist, exorcist is the Ania Simone Pomen. Lord, our God, who by your power create all things, 
and confess the universe and adorn the crown of all things created by you. Do you with your help, spiritual blessing, bless also this common cup given to them that are joined in the fellowship of marriage. Ότι πλογητέ σου το όνομα και δε δόξαστε σου η Βασιλεία, πατρό και του ήμου και του Αγίου Πνεύματο, νυν και αή, σκέφτε του αιώνα στον αιώνα. Αλλιώ. Ο Σακάθος του Φιλάνθρωπος και λέει μον Θεός. 
διευχών των Αγίων Πατέρων ημών, Κυρία Ιησού Χριστέ ο Θεός, ελέγξον και σώσον ημάς, Welcome to the bridal party, Maria Carmenales and Anthony Fellas. Oh yeah. Now, keep those round of applause coming for Matty Tiedemann and the one and only Mr. Jack Malik. Ah, oh, take it away. Now, of course, let's welcome the maid of honor and the best man, Lily Ball and Sam Carmen Yalas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me much, much pleasure to introduce as husband and wife, 
the new Mr. and Mrs. Stephen and Rudy Hamanos. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Can I have your attention for one moment, please? Now we've come to the uh, formalities part of the evening where we um, welcome up the parents to talk a little bit about the bride and groom. But first, I want to welcome up to the speech tonight the father of the bride, Mr. Terry Teedman. Come on up, Terry. Thanks, Johnny. Okay, we got that. Yes, hello everyone here tonight, and 
for the many of you here that don't know me, as Yanni just said, I'm the father of the bride, and my name's Terry. How do you do? Um, on behalf of my wife, Cherie, and I, I'd like to welcome you all here, and thank you for coming along today to help us celebrate on this wonderful and very special occasion, marriage of my daughter, Ruby, to Stephen. It really is uh, fantastic to see so many of you here today, given the many challenges and difficulties we've all had to endure over the last couple of years. Um, so firstly, Sheree and I would like to thank Steve's parents, Olga and Neil, for their enormous help and input in making this occasion the great success it is. Thank you, Neil. Thanks, Olga. And Olga and Neil, it's great to see that you've welcomed Ruby to your heritage and your family traditions. Watching Ruby dance in the hall this evening, it's clear she's embraced this with a, a real passion. <laughs> Having said that, Ruby's always been able to pull a, you know, a good dance move or two. <laughs> Using the skills she honed in the, the dance reviews and concerts that she performed with friends and family, regularly as a child. We'd also like to acknowledge Ruby's mother, Kim. She definitely took the majority of the responsibility in raising Ruby and has done a really wonderful job, as we can clearly see just by looking at the beautiful and talented bride. Talented bride. Thank you, Kim. Uh, moving, moving along. Steve, we'd like to officially welcome you into our family. Although, by looking at the guest list, it's pretty plain to see that Ruby will be the one that's, um, you know, the benefit of a huge and welcoming family. But as compact as our family is, we welcome you to it unreservedly. <laughs> the, the bride is always the focal point of a wedding, and rightly so, and rightly so. And today, Ruby is absolutely sparkling under the spotlight. Growing up, Ruby was always an independent and original person and always danced to the beat of her own drum. <laughs> but with, without even trying, Ruby had the knack of being able to get all of our attention. It's just the way that she did this, she usually ended in tears. I recall us having a lovely quiet picnic one evening, fish and chips I think it was, in King Edward Park. Ruby just happened to sit right next to a green ant's nest. <laughs> well, the picnic ended pretty quickly and Ruby had our attention for the rest of that evening. There was another encounter with some ants, I think this time it was jumping ants at Shelley Beach. And there were others, with some blisters on knees from a slide at a work Christmas party and a few puncture wounds from cuttlefish at Searle Rocks. Uh, you get the message, it's sort of, you know, so on and so on. But as I said, none of these were Ruby's doing. Just a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. But I have to say, I'm so very happy that Ruby has all of our attention today and the only tears inside are those of happiness definitely in the right place at the right time. As Ruby matured, she developed into a beautiful young woman with a style and artistic flair all of her own. And this artistic flair even extended into the online catering business of Ruby's Cookies, delivering and producing beautiful and delicious creations. It was... It was also put to good use by all of our family when it came to birthdays and other celebrations with the best balloon installations in town. Just a short phone call away. Thanks, Ruby. <laughs> and now Ruby is about to uh, enter into the next stage of her life's journey as a partner in marriage. From what we've seen of Ruby and Steve's life together so far, we can't imagine there being anything ahead but happiness and success. Steve, we're thankful for the joy and happiness that you've loved has brought to Ruby. You're a fine young man, and we know you'll be by Ruby's side as you travel life's path together. Ruby, we love you so much, and to have watched you grow into that beautiful, talented, and confident young woman you are brings us sheer happiness. We wish you all the best for the future and look forward 
to your next big announcement. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. You are, you are right, she does dance to her own beat and she sings beautifully as well. Very beautifully. <laughs> Sorry, Ruby, I've got the video footage too. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure to welcome my brother-in-law, the father of the groom, Mr. Neil Kamenyalis, the microphone. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Whoop. For those that don't know me, my name's Neil Carmeniolis, also known as Manoli. I'm the father of the groom, Stavros. Uh, and it gives me great, fantastic, I, I won't use every word, um, feeling to invite you all here, uh, family, friends, relatives, everyone, to this fantastic occasion of the celebration of the marriage of Stavros and Ruby. A um, couple of people I want to say thanks to. First one is my brother-in-law, Yanni. Stand up, Yanni. <laughs> MC, entertainer or extraordinaire. Not only for tonight, Yanni, but other things you've done for Stephen and Ruby along the way. Uh, myself and Olga, we appreciate it dearly. To the grandparents. Uh, my, my in-laws are here tonight. Unfortunately, uh, my parents aren't here tonight. <clears throat> and my late brother, unfortunately, to celebrate this event, which would have been fantastic, but I'm sure they're looking from us, uh, from up above and, and um, giving their stamp of approval to Ruby. Uh, Ruby came into Stephen's life about five or six years ago, and I think she's calmed him down a little bit, I think. <laughs> um, he's not normally known for his patience. She also lived with us for a while, and that time we got to know her, her, her other side, her warmth, her kindness. And as Yanni said, along with her fantastic singing skills and dancing. Yes, yes. I've never seen anyone enjoy eating lettuce leaves and drinking a glass of cold milk with ice in it as much as Ruby. <laughs> it's a very special talent. Ruby, we love you, and we value the time that we spent together as a family. And behalf of Olga and myself, we'd like to formally invite you in, into our family as Mrs. Carmen Yolas. <laughs> and we go on to Stephen Stavros. So Stephen was born in, in 1993, and um, Olga and myself welcomed a special young man into the world. He was our firstborn. Uh, he's grown into a very mature, serious, but gentle person with great family values. Um, he's also like, very loyal, dedicated, driven, some great talents. He's not a bad soccer player, not as good as his father, but not too bad. <laughs> he's also a little bit impatient, and I think he gets this trait from his mother. <laughs> One story that sticks out, and we we're talking about, I think you said, Terry, uh, something about uh, uh, ants. We've got one with birds. When uh, we were laying some lawn, some turf one day, and Stephen thought he knew better and he could do the job better and blah, blah, blah. He was getting a little bit stressed. And, you know, and hands in the air, as us Greeks do, we talk with our hands. And what happened? He started walking off and um, a bird dropped a little white product on his, uh, dropping on his head, I think it was. <laughs> So he wasn't very happy with that. And the moral of the story is, listen to your father or life will shit on you. <laughs> Stephen, we are very proud of you. Uh, not only for your personal achievements, but as the person you have become, the man you have become. And today he carries forward a little bit of family tradition. So the, the wedding ring that Stephen was wearing today was actually my late father's, whose name was also Stavros, Stephen Carmeniola. So carry a little bit of our family tradition forward. So thank you, Stephen. <laughs> to Ruby's parents, thank you again for uh, welcoming Stephen into your lives, into your homes, into your families. Uh, we appreciate that dearly and I know he feels welcomed. It's fantastic. Some advice, uh, sorry, Kubaro, 
say it, my other son. Yeah. <laughs> In Greek we say pandaxios. Uh, and obviously for the rest of the bridal party, we say in Greek again, stadikasas, to your wedding. So, and I must admit, they all look lovely. Um, I just wanted to say one more thing about Ruby. Ruby, you look stunning tonight. You're a fantastic, what a bride should be. Well done. <laughs> I don't have a lot of words. So, some final last words of advice for Stephen and Ruby. Life will throw you a few hurdles, but if you work together as a team, communicate, you'll get through anything together. Love, care, and nurture each other's dreams and goals, and always know <clears throat> that our door will always be open for you. I'll leave you with a couple of close things to hold on during your life. One thing is your Greek culture and heritage, which obviously is very important to your mother and I, um, and I think something that you can carry through your life as well. And one last thing is that my dear late brother Mickey, who said to my, me at my wedding 30 years ago, never forget your family, because your family will never forget you. Stephen Ruby, we love you, congratulations, and we'll see you all on the dance floor, and grandkids, yes. Thank you, Neil. Now it gives me a great pleasure to welcome the mother of the bride, Kim Mendes. Please come up, Kim. Okay. Thank you very much and welcome everybody for coming to this wonderful occasion of Ruby and Stephen's wedding. I'm gonna do a little bit of a different thing. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Ruby for those people who haven't known her as long as I do, as long as I have. And um, I'm gonna start right at the beginning. <laughs> She's gonna hate me. Ruby's entrance to the world was remarkable because it happened so quickly. Even the obstetrician missed it. Um, and from that time, it should have been obvious to everyone that she was going to do things her own way and on her own terms, and she has. She was always an incredibly easy baby. Uh, she would be the sort of child that just wake up and play with the toys. She never screamed, she never yelled. And when she got old enough, she'd climb out of the cot go in and turn the television on. She was tiny when she was doing this. Uh, and <laughs> she would go to the kitchen cupboards, open them up and build. And oh yeah, pull out the pots and pans. So every toy she had, she pulled apart, she deconstructed. Some of them I deconstructed. Susan, remember that guitar you bought her? Yeah. Her auntie was really good at buying those really obnoxious, noisy toys. So, <laughs> she did like it, yeah. I hated it. <laughs> when I took her grocery shopping, she'd sit in the pram and she'd look in everyone's eyes and try an eye contact and then she'd flash this big smile. So she drew people to her. She was a really beautiful little human being. When we got home and I was unpacking the groceries, she'd grab boxes or whatever she could and she'd say to me, I'm gonna go and make a crocodile as she took the egg carton and I think to myself, okay, and I go, great, yeah, good idea, thinking, yeah, right. Sure enough, 10 minutes later, she'd come back with this amazing looking crocodile made from the egg carton and say, can we get some green paint? <laughs> she, was, she was, the creative stuff started very, very early. Um, she, she loved dressing up and um, performing at childcare and preschool. She'd lead all the other kids and they'd put on performances. So she had all that right at the beginning. There were also times I had to take Ruby to work. My boss was a lovely Irishman and he absolutely adored Ruby, Seamus, remember Ruby? And he would say, those sparkling eyes and that beautiful smile, how can you not fall in love with that child? So she was the only person who was allowed to go into his office without making an appointment with the, his admin person. And she would run upstairs, push open the door and go, hi, Seamus. And she was just a little toddy, about four. And when she left, she'd do the same. It didn't matter who was in his office, um, she would go in. So she won hearts wherever she went. But she wasn't always just cheeky, adorable. She was sometimes cheeky, naughty uh, when I took her to work. 
And I remember really clearly one lecture I was giving and there was a big podium and students all sitting up. And there was Ruby sitting behind, just colouring in, being good for about 30 minutes. And then she poked her head around the corner and looked at the students and there was a bit of a laugh and a giggle from the audience. And then she got a bit braver and she walked right in front. And then she started to dance up and down. <laughs> at that point, I just said, okay. The students were all, they'd lost it. And I'd totally lost my audience. That was the last time you ever came to lecture with me, Ruby. <laughs> but yeah, she's always had that mischievous streak. Um, she loved school. Her kindy teacher used to ask me if she ever stopped smiling. And she was friends with everyone and so accepting of difference. She liked the brainiacs, the tomboys and the cool girls. Everyone. But there were a few people she really connected with and one of those at an early age was Rosie Chu Hugadua, whose mum and dad is here today. Um, and when she was older, it was the lovely Lily Vile who's with us tonight. And those, so she was always a quality over quantity kind of girl. She had very, she had natural rhythm and as her dad has said, um, gymnastic ability at an early age, front and centre of the dance classes. Um, basically, the dance teacher's favourite. So from those beginnings, you have our Ruby, sharply intelligent, creative and quirky, but also incredibly capable and organised. And I'm biased when I say also incredibly beautiful. But I'm sure you'll agree. She's thoughtful and kind-hearted, but be warned, if you dare to take her on, she's more than capable of standing up for herself. And that brings me to Stephen. So who is this guy who is prepared to take her on? Let, let me tell you a little bit about how I met Stephen. Do you remember Steve? <laughs> it was about 3 a.m. <laughs> you know, that time of night when you dare to sleep and my phone rang and rang. Do you remember? <laughs> no, Stephen's in denial. <laughs> it was Ruby. Mum, I'm at the beach. My car has a fat bat flat battery and I'm thinking, 3 a.m. at the beach? I thought you were in bed. <laughs> so, yeah, you do, oh, oh. You do remember. <laughs> so Kevin and I grabbed the jumper leads, jumped in the car in our PJs. It's a good look. And what I thought down the, on the way there was, oh, this poor guy. Like, imagine that. The first time you meet the girlfriend's parents that's going to be like this. It was pretty funny. But Stephen took it all in his stride. The thing that... <laughs> I most noticed he was totally comfortable in his own skin. <laughs> Even in those circumstances, he made some cute comment about what could have been better. You know, the first time I met you would, would have been nice if it was on better terms or something like that. But I left thinking, hmm, comfortable in his own skin, tick. Good looking, tick. <laughs> you know, those first impressions of the boy who was in the car park with my daughter at 3 a.m. <laughs> the first night Steve came to my home, what I noticed was the calm he exuded. He walked into the room and everyone kind of went, oh. And I, I have no explanation for that. He just made me feel really calm. Uh, and everyone, he just, he was very comfortable. He was very relaxed. He was comfortable talking to people. Um, and the other thing I remember was that I chose to cook my famous Middle Eastern lamb. I mean, what was I thinking? <laughs> if you know Stephen's dad, <laughs> you'll know his Greek lamb. 
is second to none, and I apologise, Lisa. You're, 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 the, you're the better dessert cook. But in fact, everything he cooks is superb. <laughs> and I can see Stephen, you know, looking at me and going, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> so not long after that evening, I had the pleasure of meeting Maria, I think, first. I think we went shopping together. Um, then Neil and Olga and Sam. And then it wasn't long after that I was invited to Christmas, Maritita's Christmas, and I read the, read the, met the other Carmagnolises along the way at various functions. And I was made to feel incredibly welcome. I just felt immediately adopted as part of the family, which is a really, really lovely thing, and I'm forever grateful for that. Families, you are the most beautiful families. So, in fact, they were so all-embracing that they took on Ruby when I took off to Brisbane for work, um, which is no small thing to take someone who isn't your own child into your home. Um, and so, yeah, again, I'm forever grateful for your generosity, Olga and Neil and Sam, because you, you had to put up with it too. So, Stephen, from those inauspicious beginnings to now, we love you. And we welcome you to our small family. And th thank you for you and yours. You really do come from a lovely, lovely family. And it's so lovely to see my beautiful daughter surrounded by so many people who obviously adore her. So thank you very much, everybody. Good luck, guys. You're a great team. I'm sorry, but I'm just going to be a bit of a pain here. Um, I know you really want me to sit down, but my family were unable to come this evening. Um, thanks to Mark McGowan, and the, the, because they all live in Perth. Um, so my brother's just sent a quick little message, and so has Nana. So I just want to read that out. I know I've overstayed my time. To Ruby and Stephen from the Edmonds family way out west, so sorry we could not be there to enjoy your special day. Missed it by 14 days, so typical. Wishing you all the best for the future and can't wait to spend some quality time with you as a married couple. Enjoy this beautiful evening surrounded by family and friends. So annoyed that I am not there to stir you up and hope you are wearing your platform shoes. Uncle Jason. They uncle Jason is the biggest tease of an uncle. He was, he was cruel when they were young. <laughs> okay, from Nana. To Ruby and Stephen, sorry to be missing your great day. Always look back on this day with fond memories, wishing you lots of love and happiness as you go forward as husband and wife. Love, Nana. Okay, I'm gone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Kim. Now I'd like to uh, welcome the bride's sister, Maddie Tiedemann, to the microphone, and I can't wait to hear. Sorry, what dance school did she go to, Kim? What dance school was it? Yeah, Ruby, yeah. French. <laughs> pig's ass it was, anyway. Maddie, come to the microphone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Maddie Tiedemann. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. When Ruby was deciding who she would get to give this speech this evening, um, she told me she wanted to pick the coolest sister that she had. She said, don't beat me to the joke, Yaya. <laughs> she told me it also had to be the funniest sister that she had. I suggested perhaps that might be me, and that's how I ended up here today. The fact that I am her only sister is just besides the point. 
When I was four, Ruby graced us with her presence and really ruined the only child vibe that I had going on. Truth being told, it was so exciting for me to have my very own mini me. Mum dressed us in matching outfits, which I thought was fabulous. Ruby, the baby, obviously had no say in the matter. My favourite mini me moment was my seventh birthday party. It was witch themed. <laughs> I dressed up Ruby as a cat. <laughs> she was two and a half, dressed in a black leotard with cat ears. And her job for the evening or the day was to stand at the end of my broomstick for photos. <laughs> It probably goes without saying that Ruby didn't have much to say in that. <laughs> you may have noticed that Ruby and I share a somewhat vague similarity in the way that we look. Some <laughs> something I never thought twice of as kids, it's not uncommon as we've gotten older for people to mistake us. When someone thinks that I'm Ruby, I'm obviously delighted because she is four years my junior and I think, Wow, they must think that I look so young. When someone thinks that Ruby is me, not really the same reception. A <laughs> Couple of years ago, Ruby told me that a girl waved at her and said, hi Maddie, when she was walking along the beach. I said, oh, who was it? She said, I don't know. I said, didn't you ask who it was? She said, no, I just kept walking. <laughs> said, did you at least smile and pretend that you knew who it was and wave? She said, no, why would I do that? <laughs> so huge thank you to Ruby for all those account encounters. <laughs> and si aside from being a loyal <laughs> sister to me, Ruby really is a loyal and reliable friend and family member to all who know her. Ruby goes above and beyond for those that she loves and cares about, even if she complains about doing it. As she's gotten older, I have nothing but admiration for Ruby's creative streak, an attribute that I absolutely did not get. If you look around the room, each and every decoration is designed or created by Ruby. She has worked tirelessly to make the decorations special tonight. Over the years, she has helped create so many magical moments for our family, my friends and me. She has a crazy knack for perfecting the decorative flair to any occasion. I'm sure that so many of you have had the treat of her special creations over the years. Stephen, no one ever says this, but you look beautiful tonight. <laughs> Seriously though, you, two, you compliment Ruby perfectly and really are her other half. You're the calm to her storm and her constant voice of reason. <laughs> it makes me so happy to see that Ruby is always so comfortable around you. You also brought her a second family who she loves and adores. And for that, I can see that she is eternally grateful. So to Stephen's family, thank you so much for the love and support that you give to Ruby. To both of you, I wish you only happy days for your future. I look forward to all the exciting milestones to come. And so, without further ado, can I ask everybody to raise a glass? To Ruby and Stephen. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Maddie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now I'd like to welcome uh, another man of the moment. I know you've been waiting all night to hear from the best man, and there is a reason why he is the best man. And no, I'm not, talk I'm not talking about Jack Mellick, just calm down, Jack. <laughs> but Jack may do us a, a nice poem a little bit later on, so we'll see how we go. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium, my nephew, Mr. Sam Cumyals, the best man! Thank you. Uh, I wrote most of this last night when I was pretty pissed, so. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now's the time for the main event. 
I, as the best man, get the honour of doing a speech tonight, and you're all lucky enough to hear it, so buckle in for the next hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> First off, I'd like to say the bridal party looks, I guess, great, but there's a few down the end there that aren't, so. Um, yeah, a bit more effort next time. Um, how good's the band tonight? The, the guitars sound brilliant tonight, I don't know why. Um, so Steve and I are brothers, and we're pretty close. Um, we shared a room for 18 years, I think. Um, from, but from, since I can actually remember, he's been an absolute pain. And from what, what, what mum has told me, um, he used to wake me up from my naps when I was a baby so he could play with me. And again, from what mum tells me, it was so bad that when I was around two, um, I hit him over the head with a meat hammer which was uh, accidentally left out, I guess. Um, I'm guessing she found him as annoying as I did. And if you're concerned, there's a meat hammer. It was only one of the small ones, so it was all right. Um, growing up, Steve was very competitive, and back then I wasn't really. Um, any game we'd play, you'd have to make it into a competition. Um, and I always say, no, let's just, let's just play, like, whatever. Um, and it's funny too, because regardless of if it was a competition or not, I'd always win, so. <laughs> and they'd also, also end up in the same way. Stephen being pissed off because A, I didn't want to play the way he wanted, or because I'd always win. Um, it, got to, it got to the worst point when Stephen would play Halo. Um, you'd hear him screaming from across the house. Like, the neighbours must have thought there must have been some sort of child abuse going on or something. Um, and even like he was actually like very good at it, which is funny too. And we had this old big box TV and you'd just hear three loud bangs every game because he used to just kick the shit out of it. He used to have a chair just sat in front of it and just every time. You'd also hear like just a massive scream and then you hear some, another loud thud and that was Steven throwing the controller against the wall. Um, he broke, how many did you break? Must have been must, around 10 somewhere. Um, he ended up, because you can't really afford to buy a controller every week, so he set up a pillow against the wall and would just peg it at that instead. And then, so he peg it, kick the TV, and then be back ready to respawn, so that was good. Um, having Stephen like, as a brother wasn't all rage and anger though, mostly that, but not always. He did usually give great advice about what I should and shouldn't do, usually through an insult but it was usually good advice, so, you know. Um, we also have a lot of the same interests from football and video games to music, and even though my taste is clearly more refined and most would say better, uh, it's, only that, it's only through harsh judgment and criticism that it became that way, so. Thank you, I guess. <laughs> but that's enough about Stephen and rage and judgment. Now on to his now wife and my sister, Ruby Kalmanyolis. <laughs> or as she's affectionately known, the human headache. <laughs> I remember getting home, well, she'd get home from work, so I'd be just hanging out home, playing PlayStation or something. Um, straight away, hey Sam, what are you doing? Just playing PlayStation. Oh cool, what have you been doing today? Oh, nothing. Oh cool, what's this? <laughs> just, just a controller. Oh yeah, cool. When did you get that? At this point, I'm like, all right, can you just get out now? I'd, I'd, I'd eventually just, like, she'd just keep asking questions, so I'd, I'd have to get up and just go close the door. Um, and I'd even have to put stuff behind it so she wouldn't keep trying to come in, like my famous money box. Very famous money box. Now, imagine that every day for, a, was it a year? Yeah, exactly. So I'd say she's more than, more than earned the name Human Headache. Um, but I do have to say she makes Stephen very happy, which is great to see. And even more importantly, uh, she makes him as frustrated as, as I can, so. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and so I'll happy welcome her to the family because of that. Um, and I also liked everyone to raise their, raise their glass to Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Ruby Carmignolis. And I can't wait for the uh, kids to come so I can get them a drum kit. 
Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Did you bring your guitar tonight at least? Did you bring your guitar tonight? Oh, you were in the car. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure and honour to welcome the man of the moment, the groom tonight, my nephew, Mr. Stephen Carmignola. Thank you. Um, all right, let's start. Good evening, everyone. Thanks, Sam, for your kind of kind words. Um, I'd like to welcome you all and thank you for coming tonight. Like, as, as strange it may sound for some of you, because there's over 100 people here in attendance, but this is as concise as a guest list as we could make it. So um, I hope you know that we're all very happy that you're here. And um, Ruby and I really appreciate you all coming. So thank you very much. All right, so I'll just get straight into it. Um, first, I'd like to thank Ruby's parents. Um, Ruby and I really appreciate all your support leading up to the day. And uh, I would like to personally thank you for raising such a great person. Um, after living with her for several years now, I know it must have been a chat, oh no, sorry, rewarding experience. So um, once again, thank you very much. He's done a good job. Um, Say, save the claps for later, save the claps for later. Uh, <laughs> so um, now I want to thank my parents, um, not only for what you've done for the wedding, but for a lifetime of really good parenting. <laughs> um, you always led me and my siblings down the right path and um, you've always served as the perfect role models for how a relationship should be between a husband and wife. So. Um, I thank you very much for that. All right, so on to the bridesmaids, my sister Maria, um, Ruby's sister and my sister-in-law Maddie, and of course, the great maid of honor, Lily Vile. I'm sure everyone here would agree that you, you guys look great tonight. So, well, well done, well done. <laughs> Ruby and I really appreciate all the help that you've given Ruby, um, not only for today, but leading up to today for all the random things that Ruby thinks of. Um, so I know she appreciates you guys very much, and so do I, so thank you very much for tonight, and I, we really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, now for the interesting part, we move on to the groomsmen. It was... It was a hard choice actually picking who would be up here because if you look around, I've got a lot of really good friends. Um. <laughs> Is he playing me off? I've got 20 minutes left, so. It's... All right, so as I was saying, I've got a lot of good friends here, but um, my brother and I have always been really close. Um, We've got too much in common to list out, really. And uh, like as kids, we would fight, but they'd never last long. I'd usually choke slam or choke Stone Cold Stunner, and it would be over very quickly. So, but as, as we've grown into adulthood, um, he's, he's just remained a really like kind of reliable person for me. And I can call him at nearly any time and he'll be, he'll be available unless it requires digging, lifting, or wheelbarrowing. <laughs> But all, all jokes aside, it was a very easy choice for me for him to be one of my grooms and of course, uh, an easy choice for the best man. So next up is Tony, or should I say Dr. Fellas. Um, I've known him since we played football together as kids and then of course as adults. Um, we've played against each other, with each other, we've always been good friends. I think you'll be hard pressed to find more of a genuinely great guy than Tony. Um, one thing that I find particularly admirable about Dr. Fellas is his dedication to the field of health and fitness, even at the most unusual times. Um, there's been many occasions where we've been out at a pub or a party or something, and it gets to 6 or 8 a.m., and instead of calling an Uber or a taxi, uh, he just run home. So for these reasons and more, he's one of my groomsmen.
That, that leads me to the third guy here, Jack. <laughs> the first time I met him was when I parked my car at a football ground, sorry, football ground, and I noticed he was asleep in the car next to me less than 20 minutes before his kickoff. Um, there's so many stories to tell about Jack. There was a time where he crashed into my auntie's car on Beaumont Street. The, uh, the car was parked. Um, there's a time that he ordered a pizza delivered to the bench when he was a substitute in a football match. Um, there was another time where on a Thursday night he was undecided whether he'd go to Canada that weekend. There's just, there's too many stories, but Jack's a one of a kind guy and it's an honour to have him as a groomsman. Now to the most important part, my wife Ruby Carmignolis. So, first of all, I don't have this written down, but doesn't she just look absolutely amazing tonight? And today. Um, Ruby, you are the most beautiful, funny, and dedicated person I've ever met. Anyone that knows you can see how you go above and beyond for the people you love. And this wedding's a testament to that. It looks like all the hours you spent researching, watching shows like Bridezilla's and Say Yes to the Dress has really paid off. So that's good hours spent there. You, you and I have been through a number of life changes together now, um, from finishing uni, moving out of your mum's house, uh, moving out of my parents, sorry, moving in with my parents, buying, renovating, and moving into our house. But throughout all this, I remain confident in the longevity of our relationship together because we are completely dedicated to each other. Truth be told, this entire section on you was by far the hardest part of the speech for me to write because being with you just feels so natural. You wouldn't ask a bird why they fly or fish why they swim, it's just, it's second nature really. So I just couldn't imagine my life being any other way that it is now. We've traveled together, we've lived together, we've done a bunch of stuff together. Um, but what I really want isn't found in the past, but in our future as a married couple and um, as God willing as parents. So. With that said, I want everyone to raise a glass for my wife, Ruby. Yeah. Cheers, and have a good night, everyone. Thank you, Stephen. Ooh. 